calling both of those games with Kenny Albert, hopefully fully hydrated so he does not uh, cramp up at any point over the next several hours. Pierre McGuire, kind enough to call in from the Edmonton bubble. How are you, sir? Rich, first of all, welcome to the NBC family. Great to talk with Thanks, you again. Brother. I'm really jacked up, obviously. Thanks, man. Uh, hydrated very well hydrated <laughs> rich so ready to go and uh you know what it's quiet in the bubble right now honestly it really is uh, i think it's just uh, the calm before the storm to be honest with you calm before the storm let's start with the first match uh first match up the avalanche and the dallas stars uh a seventh game right here um walk me through what you're expecting to see in this one pierre you got to get to your game first, Rich. So if you're the Colorado Avalanche, you want to get to your speed game early. You want to spend a lot of time in the offensive zone. You don't want to be defending for long periods of time. And because if you do, you're playing to the strengths of the Dallas Stars, which is get it in, ground and pound, four check the heck out of the Colorado defense, get bodies in front of Michael Hutchinson, who's only getting his third ever NHL career playoff start. So you want to do those things if you're Dallas. Be aggressive, be smart, don't take penalties. Play to your strengths. Colorado, get to your game of speed and skill and dexterity. So both teams have to get to their game quick. Whomever does, Rich, I think, has the best chance to win this game seven. Why are uh, Vegas and Vancouver playing on consecutive days? Why Why? Why that, Pierre? Can you walk Every, me through that? Everybody, everybody has to play one back-to-back. And if Boston had gone to a game seven, Boston and Tampa would have had to play two back-to-backs. Huh. So it's for competitive fairness, to be honest with you, um, and that's why. But everybody has to play back-to-back in the uh, in the second round. That was just the way it was set up before we got to this, um, you know, situation. So it's an imperfect situation. Right. But I can tell you, nobody's dealt with an imperfect situation better than the National Hockey League. This is perfection personified by Commissioner Bettman, Phil Daly. I'm so proud of the people at NBC. Uh, and I can tell you this, the healthcare professionals, the hotel workers, and the players, Rich, it's been unbelievable. I'm telling you, I've been in, pro, I've been in the NHL for 32 years. I've never been more proud of our league, ever. Well, it's uh, been unbelievable. Well, it's, been, it's, it's great to see, you know what I mean? It's great to see and, and not have to wonder if anybody's clean or – um or sick it's 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 been great to see and again tonight um this kid between the pipes for vancouver um he's only the third rookie goalie to force a game seven with a shutout and now he's going to have to try and do it again. i mean it's truly amazing from san diego thatcher demko uh, again though when you got a hot goalie that's good news but back to back that's got to be something Pierre, to have to keep an uh, eye. It, sure, it sure is, Rich. And, you know, I, I'll give you some background on him. He's a tremendously athletic young man. His mother was a world-class volleyball player at uh, the University of Florida. His father was a college basketball player. His brother has played pro soccer in San Diego. Um, he's a kid that when he was 15 years of age <clears throat> at a U.S. hockey, USA development camp in Rochester, New York, the great Scotty Bowman saw him play there and told me at that time that he thought this kid was going to be spectacular. Uh, my first uh, meeting with him was when he was at Boston College playing for the Hockey Hall of Famer, Jerry York. Mm. And uh, I was blown away by how good Thatcher was then. I know the men that recruited him, Greg Brown, who's now an assistant coach with the Rangers, and Mike Cavanaugh, who's the head coach at University of Connecticut. And they both told me when they were recruiting him how great this guy was going to be. So it's not like he just fell off the turnip truck. A lot of people that have tracked him for a long time really thought that he had greatness in him. And he's showing that they were right. And then, they all were right. And then let's get to the, the third Game 7 that's going to be coming up this weekend um, between the Flyers, who have uh, forced a Game 7 with their third overtime win of the series. The Flyers have never done that before in a same series. A two-overtime win over the Islanders. Who do you think has the advantage in this seventh game? You know, momentum usually doesn't carry over, Rich, in a playoff series. But in this one, for the first faceoff, momentum's clearly on the side of the Philadelphia Flyers just because of how they won their game six to force a game seven. So the Islanders better get on their horse in a hurry and not allow Philadelphia to dictate the terms with some of their bigger people like Kevin Hayes and not let the Philadelphia defense make a difference in terms of manufacturing offense from the defense. If Philadelphia is allowed to get physical early, not take penalties and take some of the speed portion away from the Islanders. That's the problem with the Islanders. So the momentum will have 
really gone from game six to game seven. But if the Islanders get their game going early uh, with speed and score early, I think they have a little bit of an advantage. So, again, it's a little bit like Colorado and Dallas. Whoever gets to their game first uh, probably has the best chance to win. I know it's not your bubble, Pierre, but, I mean, what is what is Tampa doing in a bubble? Just chilling in Toronto? I mean, just uh, <laughs> honestly, they, they might go a full week without playing a, a, a game. Looks like if it. There's, if you weren't, you know what, Rich? I got to tell you, I lived in Toronto for a couple of years, and I, obviously over the years I've coached a lot of games there and broadcast a ton of games there. It's an awesome city when there's no bubble. Right. <laughs> you go to a lot of good restaurants, and there are a lot of good clubs to hang out in. Um, but in the bubble, it's a little different. The one thing I'd say, again, uh, tip of the hat to the NHL in particular and the Players Association, um, they've found day trips for these players to do. They've given them places to go, green spaces where they can go, where it's still part of the bubble. Uh, I have not been in the Toronto bubble. Obviously, I've been here for a long time now, and it's been, uh, since August 27th. So I've seen how our bubble works, and I've heard really good things about the Toronto bubble, but I haven't been there, Rich, so I can't speak to it. Have you ever called two games in a day, ever? Oh, I do, many times at the Olympics. In fact, okay. the Olympics, I've done three uh, for NBC. Uh, I've done two men and one women's game or two women's games and one man's game. So I've done a lot at the Olympics. At the World Junior, when I was working for a Canadian network, TSN, I did sometimes three and four at World Junior. And uh, during this uh, bubble experiment here in Edmonton, Rich, I got to tell you, Kenny Albert and I have done uh, every other day we did three games, so a day. So we've we've done uh, two for sure, and sometimes Damn. three. Well, so, I yeah. guess I guess that's a silly question because I have watched you do multiple games in a day, but I guess never game sevens would be the way to put it. No, never. that would that's the best way to do it. And you know what, Kenny and I were talking about that walking on. By the way, Rich, I know you know Kenny well. Of course. What an amazing partner to work with. Well, I mean, he this comes from he comes from awesome. good he comes from good stock. I'm in this business because of his dad, you know, just because uh, growing, growing he's up and a watching. Special man, truly, one of the best bus rides I ever had was with Marv Albert and Rio Rich uh, going to the Rio Olympics. We sat in the back of the bus and we just talked about the New York Knicks, the New York Giants, and the New York Rangers. It was fascinating. <sighs> it was awesome. Man, I would have loved to have been a fly on that wall. Hey, Pierre, again, uh, hydrate. Get get ready to call two game sevens, uh, one on USA. And then the next one on NBCSN, four Eastern stars in Avalanche Game 7, and then at 9 Eastern on NBCSN, Canucks and Golden Knights. You take care of yourself. We'll chat uh, as uh, the chalice begins to become more into focus. Thanks a lot, Rich, and welcome again to the family. Great to have you on the same team. Hey, man, that's really nice of you to say that. That's uh, Pierre Maguire. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.